training. Hand in Hand was uh, created through CMS. Uh, they, it is in order to, in the initiative to create better dementia care. So, do you all have anybody with dementia here? Yes. Yeah. Really? So, do you have a dementia unit, or are do are they integrated within all of the other elders? Okay. So that is it. that's a, a challenge, isn't it? To have dementia folks integrated with your non dem everybody has dementia folks because it's one of the most prevalent problems that we have. No, I don't want to say problems. I want to say it's one of the most prevalent issues that we have in long-term care because it's a lot of people have dementia. They have a lot of other things, but a lot of people have dementia, right? Mm -hmm. And they need special care for that dementia care, okay? So this first module, we're going to figure out how to understand the world of dementia about the person and the disease. Now I'm going to preface this a little bit, is that dementia is not a diagnosis. Did we have the MDS nurse? No. Okay. The MDS nurse would argue with me a little bit because they, you can code M dementia on the ICD-10 code, or 9 right now, soon to be 10, but it's not a disease in itself. It is a group of symptoms, but there are some diseases that that dementia is the primary um, symptom that we see. What? Who can tell me more? Forgetfulness. No, no, the, the disease. Oh. How about Alzheimer's? Mm -hmm. You have anybody with Alzheimer's? Yeah, that truly is a disease, and one of the symptoms of Alzheimer's is dementia. Okay. Okay. So the module objectives. You today, after this hour, will be able to define dementia. You will be able to identify some symptoms of dementia. You will be able to identify irreversible types of dementia and some conditions that might look like dementia but might be reversible. Um, you will be able to recognize that dementia affects people differently. Does everybody in your building that has dementia have the same behaviors? No. no. You will be able to develop empathy for people with dementia. Who can tell me what empathy is? Compassion. Compassion. Understanding how someone feels. Understanding mm -hmm. how someone feels. It doesn't mean that you feel the same thing they feel, but it means understanding how they're feeling. And under, you will be able to understand that we must meet people with dementia in their world. How, nobody in here is old enough, hopefully, to remember what reality orientation is. Does anybody know what reality orientation is? I've been in long-term care since 1988. I started in Wichita, and back then we thought reality orientation was best practice. So if somebody got mixed up about the date, they would, we would try and tell them, no, today is October the 10th, 2014. No, you are not 40 years old. No, your children are not little children. They're grown. That doesn't work in the mind of a dementia person. It doesn't work. So we need to go into their world, and that's called validation. We validate where they are. It doesn't make, what difference does it make if they think it is October the 10th, 1942? Doesn't make a bit of difference, does it? No. Okay, so let's talk about what dementia is. The goal of this lesson is to understand what the term dementia means and the symptoms of dementia. So dementia is a group of disorders with symptoms that affect cognitive, what is cognitive? Mind. Mind. Mental, that's right. A per, although I will caution you, dementia is not mental illness. It is, it's not, it's a whole different thing and during this training we're only going to be talking about dementia. We're not going to be talking about dealing with people with mental illness. Now sometimes somebody who has had a chronic mental illness schizophrenia or bipolar or, or clinical depression, 
they may very well develop some dementia. Okay, so it affects cognitive, physical. Have you had any dementia elders that uh, are physically affected by the dementia? Yeah, you do, especially as we get into the late and end stage parts of dementia. And social abilities. They just don't act socially like, sometimes like we would want them, sometimes like they always have. Because as we get into the, the different kinds of dementia, the frontal lobe of the brain are the brakes of our brain. They're what mom taught us not to do, okay? Like we don't hit other people or we don't go up and grab them in inappropriate places and things like that. Well, when the frontal lobe of the brain is affected by whatever kind of dementia that they have, then that changes. It's a physical change in their brain. It's not something that they just decide to do, okay? And it affects them severely enough to interfere with daily life. It affects their function, their ability to function. What is function? It's everything we do. We functioned to get here today, didn't we? We functioned to put our clothes on. We functioned to drive. We functioned to eat. We, what, are, what are some of the things that you do every day that you consider to be part of your functionality? Driving. Driving. What else? Getting dressed. Getting dressed. What else? Cooking Cooking dinner. dinner. Cooking dinner. Can you see that when your brain is affected, then that area of those areas of functionality are also affected. Okay. So who gets dementia? If you ask my husband, I do. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me, he does. So, it is not a normal part of aging. Have, you, have any of you heard the term senile dementia? Yes. 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 That used to be really popular, or OBS. It is not a normal part of aging. It is something, it is a disease process that happens. It's most common over the age of 65. Now that's pretty scary for me because I just had my 66th birthday in August. <laughs> so all the time I'm trying to, do I have it? Is that it? Is that it? Do I have it? And then my son tells me, no, you don't have it. <laughs> so <laughs> he doesn't want me to have it, believe me. Okay, age is the greatest risk factor. About 6% of people 65 have some form of dementia. 6%, that's scary high to me. Mm -hmm. About 75% of people over 85 have some level of dementia. 75%, that's a pretty high, so age is the greatest risk factor. Younger people can have dementia. The most common type of dementia in younger people is something called frontotemporal lobe. And we are hearing a lot about that kind of dementia because of the NFL. Because people have had repeated head injuries. Mm -hmm. And that causes dementia to come earlier in life. So the symptoms of dementia, memory, that's the one we think of, isn't it? Well, they, they're forgetful, they're forgetful. Well, that's only one of the symptoms that might happen with dementia. We have four kinds of memory, all of us do. All of our lives we have. We have short-term memory, which is our weakest memory. We have long-term memory, which is our strongest memory. We have procedural memory, which is associated with long-term memory, and that's remembering tasks that we've always done. Brushing our teeth, tying our shoes, playing the piano, things like that. And then we have working memory, which is trying to learn something new. It's associated with short-term memory, which is our weakest memory, and it's very difficult. So let me just give you an example. You bring a new person to come into to your facility, okay? And they have a little bit of dementia. 
and you bring them into the room, they're overwhelmed. They're very likely something has happened that has made it necessary for them to move into long-term care because I guarantee you they didn't have it on their bucket list, right? So you bring them into the room and you say, now here's your bed and here's your closet and here's the little shelf where you can bring the 12 things that there's room for. Here's your bathroom. Here's your roommate, perhaps, that you've never met before in your life. We eat breakfast at 7.30, lunch at 11.30, dinner at 5.30, and if you need anything, just push this button. Did you know that 41% of people fall within the first 72 hours of admission? Because they never had this before. We're trying to get them to learn something new. Have you ever had anybody walk away from a walker? They haven't had to use a walker before. You're trying to teach them something new, which is working memory, and they can't do it. Their dementia will not allow them to do it. How does it feel when you can't do something somebody wants you to do? Frustrating. Yes, it's frustrating. You feel like a failure, right? Yeah. Okay, any questions about memory? Concentration. This is like attention. Mid to end stage dementia folks, the maximum time of attention that they can pay is 15 to 20 minutes at the most. So why do you put a movie in? Because they can't watch for two hours. They can only watch for 15 to 20 minutes. There's some great things out there that you can do that last 15 to 20 minutes. But watching a movie is not one of them. Now, do you have some people that like to watch movies? Absolutely. Should you offer movies? Absolutely. But not for everybody. It has to be individualized based on their abilities. Okay. Next symptom is orientation. Remember we talked about reality orientation. They're going to have some problems with this because Short-term memory is their weakest. Long-term memory is their strongest. Have you had the little lady that's wandering around and wanting to see her kids? Yes. Or wanting to get her kids off the school bus? I have to go because I have to get my kids off the school bus. That's real to her. How would you feel if you had kids in your, in your reality, your kids were coming home and you, they needed to get off? Somebody needs to be there when they come home, right? How, do, how would it feel if you couldn't do that? Somebody locked the door and you can't get out of here. It's increased anxiety. I guess so, because they're your kids. Right. So we have to meet them where they are in their reality. Their perception is always their reality. You will not argue them out of it. You can try, but when you argue with somebody who has something very firmly set in their mind, you're going to increase agitation. Okay, language. So have you seen the person that has some language disabilities? Language comes from the temporal lobes. It's right up here. Many kinds of dementia are, affect the temporal lobe. So the wrong word comes out. Or they struggle to find a word. Right? Mm -hmm. So you have to pay attention and help them get there. Judgment. Oh man, how's that working out for us, some of our folks with dementia and their judgment? Well, I thought I could get up. I've always gotten up and gone to the bathroom without help. I don't even remember you told me I had this button to push. Their judgment is not very good. We have to meet their needs. The Alzheimer's Association for years and years has taught that every behavior is communication of an unmet need every behavior. There is no such thing as an abnormal or a problem behavior. Every behavior is communication of an unmet need. They're just telling us in a different way than you and I would talk. Okay? Visual spatial skills are seeing the reality of space and color. And we're going to see a great example of visual spatial skills.
Thanks for joining our painting class, Mrs. Caputo. Come with the rest of us. It's time for lunch. Oh. Mrs. Caputo, we are having lasagna, your favorite. Uh -huh. What's the matter, Mrs. Caputo? Is this stuff in your way? Here. All right, that ought to do it for you. I, I can't, I'll fall. Mrs. Caputo, look at me, it's Lynn. It's okay. Here, take my hand. I'll help you. That's right. You know I wouldn't let anything happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> We're in this together. <laughs> Wonderful. Here we go. There you are. <laughs> are you feeling better now? Yes, thank you. Good. <laughs> now let's go get some of that lasagna I saw in the dining room. <laughs> thank you. Yes. I love lasagna. Mm. Okay. Here we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So what did you see? She thought that it dropped off. She thought it was a hole, mm -hmm. didn't she? Mm -hmm. Now, my husband is an industrial engineer. And what he noticed was that at the end of that little hallway, there was very dark carpet. So maybe it would have affected, maybe not. But so what she, she thought it was a hole, and it was dangerous to step in there. Facilities, several years ago, used to think that was a great idea. Like in front of exit doors, you would put black carpeting or black tile. They've kind of changed that now. But maybe that isn't the right thing to do. Okay, so what was Lynn's reaction? She was the caregiver. What was her reaction to the situation? She was very calm and understanding. She was very calm and understanding. She didn't get frustrated with her. She didn't say, come on. Now, what was the first thing you noticed? Did anybody else notice the, the housekeeping car thing right yeah. there in the middle of the... No, we don't do that, <laughs> do we? No. no, we don't do that. Because it became a barrier to her. And besides that, it's not safe. It's a fall hazard, so... Any other comments about the video? So, and then the last one is sequencing. Figuring out what order we're going to do things in. Remember I told you about procedural memory? And that's things that we have learned over long periods of time, years of time. So, here's what we know about procedural memory and sequencing, is that we don't all do things in the same order. How many of you wet your toothbrush before you put the toothpaste on? I didn't. I didn't. How many of you put the toothpaste on and then wet? Yeah, we don't always do it the same. Would it be good if Mrs. Caputo could brush her teeth for as long as possible by herself? Absolutely it would. We have to know what her procedures are. Because if we break the procedure, we have disabled her. She won't be able to continue on with the process. So we have to be very aware of what her procedure, so how could we find some of that out? To try to have her do it first? Yes, we could have her do it first. If she can't tell us, what, can, what else can we do? Ask her family. Ask her family. Absolutely. Maybe she, we could ask her and she could tell us, although generally not. 
it depends on what level they are, of what stage they are in the dementia, but generally we're going to have to watch her or ask her family. Now I would venture to say that we could ask your family members, does she put the toothpaste on and then wet the toothbrush, or does she wet the toothpaste and then put the toothpaste on? And they probably wouldn't be able to tell us, would they? I don't think anybody in my household could tell us. So you have to just really pay attention so that she can be as independent for as long as possible. Same thing with eating. All, every ADL, every function that we do. Okay, any questions about those? Sequencing, this is what we're just talking about, doing things by sequence. Okay, Ms. Caputo, here are your clothes. I'll be back in a minute, so why don't you go ahead and get dressed, okay? Okay. All right. It's me, Heather Miss Caputo. Hey, I'm back. Oh, let me help you with your socks. There we go. You hold that. All right. Now, let's put your socks on. Oh. There you go. Now your shoe. Okay. Oh. happening? She got confused on which comes first. Yeah. She had the shoe on already. Maybe if we would have given her the shoes and the socks, she might have been able to do it, but maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe she need more, needed more supervision with that function. And what was Heather's reaction? She was very calm. She just redirected her and right. She didn't she did let her do it. That's right. She let her do it. Is there benefit to Mrs. Caputo to be able to put her shoes and socks on for as long as possible? Mm -hmm. Absolutely there is benefit to that. So we just need to kind of make it successful for her. Okay? Any questions about sequencing? Yeah. Do you have any questions about the symptoms of dementia? Have you seen any other symptoms? I think we can talk about those individualized behaviors in nearly every one of these categories, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in this lesson, you've learned the definition of dementia. Who can tell me what it is? It's a group of symptoms. It's not a diagnosis in itself. It's a group of symptoms that affects Cognitive, cognitive, physical, physical social, social. social. That's exactly right. And we've talked about the symptoms of dementia. So now let's talk a little bit about the types of dementia. You're going to understand irreversible types of dementia, conditions that may present with dementia-like symptoms. Not really dementia, but they have symptoms that fool us. And we don't always react exactly the right way. So, some types of irreversible, Alzheimer's disease, most common form. Right now, in today, in developed countries, there are 5.4 million people with diagnosed Alzheimer's. By the year 2050, we think it's going to be somewhere around 4 billion in developed countries. We're living longer, and what's the greatest risk factor? Age. So we're living longer and we're going to have more of it. Normal lifespan with um, Alzheimer's type dementia is going to be somewhere within eight, and eight to 20 years. So you start to get kind of 
you start to have some kind of symptoms that are affecting your function, not just forgetting where you put your keys, but some things that are really affecting your function. And you go to the doctor and he tells you, well, I think you're in early stage Alzheimer's. And what we know now is that there's a possibility they'll live eight to 20 years with that. And it's progressive. It comes in a line like this. Right here is the day of diagnosis, and it goes like this. Today is the best day you have. Now, there's going to be some good moments someplace along in there, but today's the best day that you have because those brain cells, it's a neurodegenerative disease, and those brain cells are dying every day. Vascular dementia, what, to, what would that be? What does vascular mean to you? Vessels. Blood vessels. Mm -hmm. Usually it is caused by an event. Stroke, heart attack, something that has deprived part of the brain. Now, Alzheimer's type dementia affects the whole brain. Vascular dementia, it may be a bleed, it may be a, a something that's blocking that area of the brain, but it's that area of the brain that is usually affected. It happens in a stepwise manner. So you're going along here in life pretty well, and you have some sort of vascular event, and you have a sudden decline, but you don't die. So you level off right here, and then you have another event. So it goes in a stepwise pattern. There really isn't any projected lifespan with vascular dementia because it's very likely that one of those events is actually going to cause death. Okay? Lewy body. How many of you have seen Lewy body? I don't know where they're angry. They can be. They're hard to um, understand and predict because Lewy body looks like this. It's up and down and up and down. And so those fluctuations can happen over months. They can happen over weeks, over days, or even during the day. And it's caused by protein plaques that are in the brain, okay? So Lewy body is really difficult. So some of the symptoms of Lewy body reflect symptoms like Parkinsonism. Uh, and they have almost always have hallucinations that are based around small children or animals. Pleasant. Have you had the little lady that's, the kids came in today. Oh, I love it when the kids come. Aren't they sweet? Yeah. So would you medicate for it? No, because it's not causing distress. Would you argue with them and say, I don't see any kids over there. No, you would not. You don't have to lie to them if that makes you uncomfortable. Although, please go to where they are. It, what does it hurt to say, don't you just love it when the kids come? Because it is a positive thing. Symptoms of Parkinson's, what are the, some of those? Shuffling, Shuffling gait with tremor. That's right, tremor. What else? Stiffening. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Flat affect. One of the worst things you can do for somebody with Lewy body dementia is give them Cinemet, which is the drug of choice for Parkinson's. So we must be advocates for the elders. If the elder goes to the doctor and you are reporting to them, well, start to have a little shuffling gait, uh, start to have a little language deficit, please be their advocate and just, and it, he may say, let's start him on a little low dose of Cinemet. Please say to them, have you ruled out Lewy body? Because it will cause a huge decline in that fluctuation. Mixed dementia is just oftentimes vascular dementia and Alzheimer's dementia happens at the same time. So then we've got the progressive stepwise. So we see different levels pretty frequently. Parkinson's disease, there is a dementia that goes along. Have you had some Parkinson's related dementia folks? Yeah, they, toward the end, uh, it gets pretty advanced by the time uh, we see true dementia. Frontotemporal dementia is when the, the, this usually is caused by uh, some, it, well, it's always caused in the frontotemporal lobes. Frontal lobe is your breaks, those inhibitions, those, um, we can, people get obsessed with things. 
uh, and then the frontal lobe is, or the temporal lobes are speech and language. Almost always happens 50s and 60s, even can be in the 40s, 50s and 60s. Nobody has real personality changes except frontotemporal dementia. And these people do go through significant personality changes. Oftentimes they become estranged from their family members. Uh, oftentimes they'll go to the star casino and gamble everything they have away. Uh, they become very hateful to children and family members sometimes, and so people become estranged. Huntington's disease, I just read an article that we now may have some treatment for Huntington's. Huntington's is a very disabling mental uh, deterioration. Gornicke, Korsakoff, Crutchfeld, Joachim, AIDS-related dementia, all of those there's all kinds of irreversible. We can't fix these. We can't fix them. We have some drugs available for dementia uh, that will reduce the angle of the progression of the disease. The anticholinesterase inhibitors, Aricept, Nomenda, Exelon, Razodyne, those kind of things. But nothing cures it. So what happened? What kind of meds do we give to somebody with dementia? oftentimes. Do we give them meds? Mm -hmm. What do we give them? Excellent. Yes. Do we give them anything to control the behaviors? Oh, really? What do we want? Why would we give somebody with dementia Ativan? Um, if their behavior is out of control and they're, you know, dangerous to themselves. Yeah. What do we get? What are we looking for when we give the Ativan? Calm down. Sedation. That's what we're giving it to it for, isn't it? To sedate them. That's not the primary reason we would give Ativan. It's an off-label use. How about antipsychotics? Anybody in here know what your antipsychotic rate is? I know it's really low. Perfect, perfect. Because when we give it over the state, that's one of the reasons that we're doing this, is the initiative to reduce off-label use of antipsychotics. One of the issues is that physicians order antipsychotics for dementia-related behaviors. One in 12 will die from the drug. The death certificate will say either heart disease, stroke, or an infection, usually pneumonia. But one in 12 will die from the drug. The side effect, and all we're getting is the side effect of sedation from it. We're not getting, we're not treating the dementia. There is no drug to treat dementia. Things that could have dementia-like symptoms, B12 deficiency. So if you have somebody that's, sh that's exhibiting some dementia-like behaviors, would it hurt to draw a B12 level? Probably not. Medication side effects is the number one. The number one thing that we see is the medication side effects is why we see dementia-related behaviors. Depression, thyroid or endocrine problems, infections, electrolyte problems, and dehydration. All significant clinical issues that we get some dementia-like related behaviors, and so we treat those instead of the real root cause, right? Many times that happens. Other things, constipation, can cause dementia-like behaviors. Chronic pain, it's the number one trigger for dementia-related behaviors. Pain, unresolved pain. Just because a person gets dementia does not mean that their arthritis that they've had for 30 years went away. But we forget about it because the elder can't tell us and my right hip right there is just, I would rate that about a 6 out of 10. They can't do that. And so we don't pay attention to the fact they may be having pain. Lack of sleep. Tell me about you all when you're tired. Do you act the same way that you act when you're full of energy and fully rested? No. Neither do they. But we think that we get out a behavior sheet, a behavior monitoring sheet, you know, if they get kind of cranky when they're tired. 
We used to, how many of you have heard of sundowning syndrome? We used to think that that was related to shadows and lights and things like that. Now the research is kind of showing it's fatigue. They're, they get tired late afternoon. Guess what? Me too. You all ever get tired? But we think it's a dementia-related behavior. So maybe all it would take is a 30-minute nap, a power nap, about 2.30 in the afternoon, and we might not have sundowning symptoms. Now, that's not a guarantee. Can you think of any others? Anything else that might cause some dementia-related behaviors? Medications. Yes, medications, absolutely. Pain is the number one trigger. How about just unmet needs? How do you feel when you haven't brushed your teeth? Gross. What? Gross. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. So how's the oral care? Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Because remember now, they can't tell you what the need is. They can't make the process work to be able to tell you what their unmet need is. So maybe it's as simple as brushing their teeth. Maybe they're cold. Maybe they're hot. Maybe they're hungry. Maybe they're thirsty. All of those things. We need to look at what the unmet need is based on the elder and not just hand them a med. Delirium is one of the biggest issues we face. This results from sudden change in medical condition or a new medication. It causes increased confusion, problems with thinking and functioning, and it usually improves once that is resolved. Once you have, it's been diagnosed and treated, it will resolve. Can anybody give me an example? Somebody that you've seen with delirium? UTI. A UTI. It's the most, it's what we all run to. If, you know, and, well, she started showing this behavior again. Well, let's do a UA. <coughs> it's, and, and many times it's right. We talk about symptomatic and asymptomatic urinary tract infections, but behaviors, abnormal behaviors to that elder is a symptomatic indication of a UTI. Anything else you can think of? How about blood sugars? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. If, if you have an elder that's got, that has a big blood sugar swings, you are absolutely going to have some behaviors if they have tendency to have behaviors. So do you see that it's not necessarily um, just their brain function? It's that their brain function isn't allowing them to communicate what the need is. How about going to the bathroom? How does it feel when you have to go to the bathroom? I drove down here from Lawrence last night and I stopped in Ottawa and got a large Diet Dr. Pepper. And by the time I got to Winfield, Wellington, mmm, it gets uncomfortable, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But they can't figure out what that feeling is. They can't feel, figure out that that sense of fullness and that uncomfortable feeling in their lower gut is that they need to go to the bathroom. So they get more anxious. anxious. I need to do something. Yeah, that's exactly right. We've talked about lack of sleep. It affects us. Dehydration. You have a program in place that helps you keep all your, your folks hydrated. Tell me what it is. Well, there's um, a water pitcher in every room mm -hmm. that gets fresh ice water um, three times a day and also as needed. Um, they get water and whatever kind of drink that they want um, each meal time. So there's always some kind of fluids available. Good. I hope you will start making it a practice. Every time you come in contact with an elder, when, you're, when you are just walking by somebody and you could say, do you need a drink? Is there, can I get you some juice? Would you like a cup of coffee? Mm -hmm. For me, if I have dementia, would you like a Diet Coke, Linda? Yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Dehydration is hard to recognize, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Dehydration is hard to recognize sometimes. So we have to pay attention. You have to be their voice. 
are the only voice they have. If this is all we get out of today, you have to be their voice. You have to figure out the unmet needs. You have to be that voice so that they can feel experience pleasure every day. Not every moment. So we've talked about irreversible dementias. We've talked about other conditions that could present symptoms of dementia. The goals of this lesson of understanding persons with dementia are that a, a resident's reactions and actions are directly related to how the brain is affected. The frustration that persons with dementia have and why we must meet persons with dementia in their world. We've talked a little bit about validation. Okay, so this is a picture of the brain. Okay? You can see where the language center is, the memory center, the, uh, in the brain. They're on both sides of the brain. This is a picture of an elder, of a person without Alzheimer's and one with Alzheimer's. What do you see? Smaller. Smaller. It's a neurodegenerative disease. The brain cells all over the brain die. They die. On the, your left is a brain with no impairment, one with mild impairment, and one with Alzheimer's disease. Probably pretty advanced. This is a PET scan. What do you see here? A lot of dark space. A lot of black, empty space, don't you, in the person with Alzheimer's. Here's what I need you to understand, that people with behaviors that are related to dementia can't help it. We want to blame them. He hit me. He spit at me. Right? They can't help it because the brain is no longer the same. It is a disease. Mr. O'Sullivan, it's Charlie. Huh? Good morning, Mr. O'Sullivan. Oh, you morning. shouldn't have been out all night partying. It's 6.30. Who are you? It's time to get up. What, what, what are you doing? It's time to get up. There you go. I'm the one that gets you up every morning. So come on. Oh. Poor guy. Are you wet again? You wet again? Well, I'll sit you on the toilet, and then I'll get you cleaned up. I, 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 don't, I don't need to go. I... Mr. O'Sullivan, be careful. I don't want you to fall. Did you go? Uh, yeah. Looks like you did. Good for you. Now, come on. Let's get you dressed. No. Uh, no. I, I'm tired. I, I want to go to bed. You can take a nap uh, later, but right now it's time for everyone to get up. No. All right. How about uh, these pants? Yeah? Okay. Uh, and you want a blue, blue shirt or green shirt? Blue shirt or green shirt? Okay, if you can't decide, green shirt it is. All right, let's get you dressed. All right. Nice and easy does it, buddy. Go other one, just like that. Front. There you go. We'll get you dressed. All right, Mr. O'Sullivan, you're dressed. Let's get you going to breakfast. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're moving too slow this morning. Let's go for a ride. I I, I want to walk. I I I, I want to walk. Walk later. Breakfast now. Uh, 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 uh,
seriously. All she needs is support. Just give her some support. All she needs. Come on over, Bill. We've got room for you. Where am I gonna stick here? Uh, here we I, go. I, 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 I want to I sit there. Right here. I, I want to sit there. Mr. O'Sullivan. It's cold. It's cold. I, I can't. I can't drink this. Well, you don't like your food, and your coffee's cold. I guess it's gonna be a pretty rough day for you, Mister Rose. Try to see things through the eyes of the residents you care for. How would you feel if this was your morning? When I was in second grade, my teacher, Mrs. Bowen, wrote on the chalkboard for all of our lessons. We had a very disruptive but sometimes funny kid in our class named Joe. Everyone except Mrs. Bowen called him Joe. She called him Joseph when he was acting up. So she would be writing on the board and she would have to stop and say, Joseph, I see you. Stop that. This was my first indication that other adults besides my mom had eyes in the back of their heads. Mrs. Bowen continually had to discipline Joseph as she was writing on the board. When she had finished with the lesson and was erasing what she had written, she had to discipline him again as she erased. Joseph, didn't you hear me? I said, sit down. She did not do the best job of erasing since she knew she would make Joseph clean the chalkboard after school. It seemed she always stopped halfway through and when she erased, she would leave pieces of her lesson behind. A word here, some numbers there, a patch of chalk dust, and maybe even a whole sentence. All right, Joseph, I've had enough. I know this firsthand because my mom has Alzheimer's disease, and I've come to see my mom's memories like the writing on this chalkboard as though the writing contains all of my mom's memories throughout her life, and I see the eraser like the plaques and tangles of the disease. You see, I used to think that Alzheimer's disease just wiped the slate clean, but I was wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Alzheimer's disease does not wipe the brain clean of everything. It leaves behind pieces and fragments of memories, a thought here and a few vivid emotional memories there, and then a traumatic event. Some places there are just a few words, a few numbers. There may be an almost complete memory, but it's missing some vital information. As the disease progresses, the more memories and brain functions are erased. Then the eraser goes back to the present moment, and as it goes back, it erases short-term memories. For example, Mrs. Caputo. You ready to go to the music room for the program this morning? Okay, come on over. Come on everybody, let's go over to the music room for the program. Are you all done, Mr. Hattersley? Are you sure? Uh -huh. Okay. Let's go ahead and take this off here. Mrs. Caputo, you should come with us. You'll love the program this morning. Okay, thanks. Come on, let's go. Ms. Caputo, you forgot your purse. It's on the table where you left it. Oh. Why don't you uh, meet us over in the music room, okay? Okay. Okay. Oh, hey, Miss Caputo. <laughs> you sure all ate for breakfast? You must be hungry. Sit tight. I'll see what we have left. Okay. Thanks. Here you go. Oh, thank you. That's okay, Miss Caputo. You take your time. You don't have to rush. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That Alzheimer's eraser hangs out and erases those short-term memories as they come in. Just like Mrs. Caputo, she went back to get her purse, saw the empty spot, and sat down to eat again because she had completely forgotten she ate already. No wonder it is so frustrating for people with memory loss to remember. They have fragments and pieces of memories left and when they try to put them together or sift through the information, it is overwhelming. I want to go home. It's time to be waiting. I want to go home. And think about how far has the eraser gone in the person's memories? What are they remembering? What do they like to talk about? Where are they on their chalkboard? Do they think their grown children are young again and need to get picked up at the bus stop? Or do they think they're back in World War II? Do they cry out for their mother? Are they scared when the light is out at night? Think about where they are in their chalkboard of memories. We need to remember to meet them where they are. Use their reality to make connections and conversation. Your residents may not be able to enter into your world, but perhaps you can enter theirs. differently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. So, 
understanding people with dementia, we've learned that each person with dementia is affected individually. None of us react the same. To imagine how it feels how to have dementia, that, to have dementia and why we must meet people in their, with dementia in their own world. So you have learned about symptoms of dementia, types of dementia, and understanding persons with dementia. That is the conclusion of Module 1. Thank you.